What does the conditional command block actually do? I'm sure if you've worked with command blocks before, you've noticed that conditional button, and it seems like it should be really simple, but in reality, it's kind of hard to figure out what it actually does. So I'm going to show you everything you need to know about the conditional command block. Let's start off with the obvious, which is the appearance. Here I have two chain command blocks, and if I put conditional on this one, it slightly changes to have a little bit of an indent here on the side. This is just a good representation that shows that these two could fit together, basically meaning that they're linked. Now, obviously appearances don't really matter in terms of functionality, so let's see what it actually does. Here I have a command block that says slash say number one, and here I have a conditional command block that will run slash say number two. Now, basically what a conditional command block will do is it will only run if the command block before it runs. In this case, it will only say number two if it said number one. If we give this button a press, we get both number one and number two in chat. And that is because since it was able to say number one, it also said number two. Now, this is a pretty basic example since there is really no reason for it not to say number one. But if we use some more complicated commands, you'll see how this gets a little more interesting. Using the execute if command, you can actually test for different things. In this case, I'm testing if there is an item, an item laying around in this world. If it doesn't find an item, it will actually say test failed. Basically, it couldn't find an item, it didn't give any output. If it does find an item, it will give an output, but we don't actually have anything after this because the conditional command block will say found. Now, if this wasn't conditional, when I press this button, it would run no matter what. But since it's conditional, this will only run if this command found what it was looking for, which is in this case is the item. So if we give it a press now, nothing happens. And that's because it didn't actually find an item. If we throw out any old item on the ground there, and now we press the button, it will actually say found. Since this guy was able to find an item, this guy was able to run the command. Now it doesn't end at execute if. We can also use basic commands that aren't necessarily looking for anything. For example, a completely basic set block command. This command will basically just set a stone block right above the command block. Now this isn't going to run or not run. It isn't a conditional. It's only going to do if it finds something or if something happens. It's a completely normal command. But the conditional command can still come in handy because, like I said, this will only run if this guy places the block. It will say slash stone if this one places the stone block right above. So if I give this a press, it actually says stone in chat and we get the stone block on top. But if we give it a press again, nothing happens. And that is because it could not actually set the block here. It says that. Why? Because there already was a stone block on top. Since there already was a stone block, it couldn't place another stone block. So therefore, it didn't actually run the command. And because of that, this one also didn't run the command. Now, if we get rid of the block and give it another press, you see it runs it again. So this one will only run if it manages to place this block. So you don't actually need to have a conditional command here. It can be a completely normal command. But if it fails to execute for some reason, this one won't execute either. We can use this with some other commands, for example, slash clear at p. This will clear my inventory. And again, there's no conditional here. It will just clear my inventory. And if it manages to clear my inventory, it will say slash clear. Now, I have an item here from before in my inventory. So let's see what happens when I press the button. It says cleared in the chat. And that's because it actually cleared my inventory. Now, if we give it a press again, nothing happens. Why? Because there were no items to clear. I have nothing on me anymore, so there was nothing to clear, so it could not run the command. Therefore, it did not run the slash say cleared command. Now, even though you can have conditionals like that that kind of stop when the command before it doesn't run, that does not mean anything afterwards stops to run. It does not break the chain. These commands do not care what's going on before. This one will stop if this one doesn't run. But these don't care. These will run no matter what. Here I have an example of that. This one is an execute if again for the item, just like before. This one will say found target. If it finds the item, it will say found target. Now these just say slash say one, slash say two, and slash say three. So basically, if we give the button a press after I throw out an item, there's the item, we get found target one, two, and three. All of these ran. But if we remove the item and press the button again, we only get one, two, and three. 
So even though this one didn't run, all of these afterwards still ran because they don't care what's going on. It did not break the chain. Now, using this, you can actually have multiple conditions in a very long chain of command blocks. What do I mean by this? Here we can see we have a conditional command block. This one will only run if this one runs. It doesn't matter what it is. I don't have anything here. I already gave you some examples back there. But whatever it is, this one will only run if this one runs. It doesn't care what's going on here. It doesn't care what's going on afterwards. It only cares if this one runs. Same way here, we have another conditional command block. This one will only run if this one runs. Here, I've highlighted it with blue. This one will only run if this one runs. It doesn't care what's going on here, even though this is another conditional. This one might stop. It doesn't care. This one will only run if this one runs. And again, here we can have a third one. This one will only run if this one runs. It doesn't matter what's going on back here. The chain is not broken. This one will still run even if none of these conditionals run. This one will still run in the end. Now, using this, here I have an example where we have a completely normal command, a conditional, and another conditional. Now, we know that since these two aren't conditionals, it doesn't matter. These two will run no matter what, since this does not break the chain. I already showed that there. So all we need to really focus on is these two. Now, here we have a conditional and a conditional right after another conditional. Now, don't be fooled. This does not mean that these two will run if this one runs. It might, but not necessarily, because this one is linked to this one. This one will only run if this one runs. But this one isn't linked to that one. This one's linked to this conditional. So this one can only run if this one runs but this one will only run if this one runs. I have a good example here. If I grab a button real quick and I give this a go, here I have clear at P. This one will try to clear my inventory. If it clears my inventory, then it will set a block above me. If it sets a block above me, then it will say complete. I'll give the button a press and it says complete. Since it cleared my inventory, it set the block. It was able to set the block, so it said complete. Now. If I keep the block up there, but I still give myself some items and we press the button, it clears my inventory, but it didn't say complete because this one doesn't care if this one managed to do it. It only cared if this one tried to do it. So it cleared my inventory. It tried to set the block, but it couldn't set the block. So the rest of the condition didn't work. This one didn't run because this didn't run. Even though this one run, this one doesn't care. This one only cares about the one that happened before it. So if you want a bunch of things, to happen if a single condition works. This is not the best way, since these aren't all linked to a single command block. It's only linked to the one before. Now this can be useful, obviously, but don't be fooled by thinking that all of these are linked to this one command block. Now, finally, in the end, please, whatever you're doing, make sure it's on always active. You do not want to have this be on needs redstone or by whatever means not being active. The first command block can be on a button, doesn't matter. The first command block can be powered by however you want, but all the chain command blocks afterwards have to be on always active. Please do not forget this. If it's not powered, nothing will run, whether it's a condition or not a condition. I'll make a separate videos on command blocks in depth, but that is basically everything you need to know about the conditional command in a nutshell. Comment down below if you have anything else you'd like me to make a tutorial on, and with that, I'll see you in the next video.